Good morning, folks. It has been one heck of a last half of October. Among the long list of successful solar flare uptick projections the last few years, this is one of the best. The planets lined up, the biggest sunspot of the cycle appeared, and the solar flares erupted. We had another X flare yesterday and multiple M flares that followed. The X flare itself was caught in the act. And while it rose up the X-ray charts, we simultaneously watched the radio blackout grow in intensity. A quick CME note. We know that no big CMEs have been produced by these flares, but SOHO's latest does show that some minor ejecta did leave the sun during those events, not Earth-directed or of any concern. That big active region is at the limb and ready to swing out of view. The trailing spots lack excitement. Even as it departs, we should expect some flaring. The region is still of great size. The umbras are well developed, and they continue to mix magnetically. The primary Delta class region we've eyed for days certainly remains at this time. Top eruption threat, however, becomes the large plasma filament on the northern Earth-facing disk. You stay in your seat, big guy. We also have two more coming in behind the dark coronal hole down south. Negative polarity to that one. Solar wind is relatively average today before we cross a solar sector boundary. Geomagnetic conditions are stable as well, and the lasting high electron flux levels are finally coming back down to Earth. <laughs> Wordplay. This is an animation by NASA of a nova. It is relevant as part of the ongoing expose of Nova Delphini a relatively new supernova that we're beginning to understand a bit better now, especially the expansion rate. Videos, article, and paper are linked for you below. Yesterday we mentioned the Hawaiian volcano, especially in light of the ionosphere anomaly overhead. The lava flows continue to be a problem as they are encroaching on residents, and evacuations may be on their doorstep. Eyes open, Hawaii. Also have another volcano predicted to erupt any moment in Japan. And let's kick it to the tropics watch. The Indian cyclone has been named Nilofar, set to charge towards the western border of the nation now. We are also watching a storm system develop in the far east Pacific. Forecasters give a good chance for development there. Looking at the temperature delta in the U.S. and southern Canada, let's go find the cause. Wind map shows cooler air coming in on the western side of the low, bringing Pacific moisture and a solid convergence in the central states caused by the northern flow of heat and moisture up the eastern side of the low. The Pacific moisture will still play a role out west with some snow in the mix, but the storm watches return to wide areas tonight where the convergence will charge east. Europe must think I'm a broken record at this point, but it's worth mentioning these two lows and their convergence, especially when they're actually producing severe weather and dangerous conditions every other day or so. Stick there for tonight's alerts, northern coasts and the southeastern nations. In lieu of a convergence, we're looking at straight moisture flows coming atop southeastern Australia here. We do indeed have a weak convergence atop the North Island of New Zealand as well, and those two areas in purple take tonight's watch. We're at SDO for shots of our star to close. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.20 a.m. here in Oklahoma. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.